What up guys, the Fighting Therapist here, and for today's video, we'll talk about Ramadan. Now before we jump to the video guys, Ed Mumbarak to everyone that's doing Ramadan out there. You know, especially if you're in Montreal and it's kind of summer, springtime, so you got one of the longest fasts to do in the whole world. <laughs> but before we jump to the video, guys, please don't forget to click that subscribe button, that notification bell, give this video a thumbs up in the air. How do you plan your day during Ramadan, especially if you guys are training, if you're a fighter, if you're trying to be a bodybuilder, if you're trying to gain mass, what to do? That's, that's the big question. What are you guys going to do? So. Let me guys give you a little outline of how to plan your day so that you can still continue doing gains, um, answer all those questions that I've been getting on whether you should bulk, cut, maintenance, how much protein you should have, everything like that. So we're gonna jump into it. So when it comes to training, I specifically think that and have done and should try that throughout the day, you guys do a little bit of list training. So low steady state intensity training throughout the whole day. Um, whether it be a rock, a uh, walk, a little run, some yoga, some stretching, some mobility, stuff like that. Nothing very heavy, nothing very light, and no strength training at all. Just specifically cardio-based, low steady state intensity. You're fasting pretty much the whole freaking day. You're dry fasting pretty much the whole day. So trying to do something that's gonna expend energy, get you thirsty, get you sweating, not really what you want, but doing some low steady state cardio is going to be the best bang for your buck. To lose fat as well, since you're doing Ramadan, you're pretty much in ketosis, <laughs> very much in ketosis, especially when it comes to the dry fasting. So you are burning a lot of fat. So might as well just continue that and upregulate that fat burning effect by doing that low steady state cardio. Should you do HIT? Absolutely not, <laughs> especially not during Ramadan. Even I wouldn't do it at night since that's gonna delay your sleeping and causing your heart rate to go that high. It's not really bang for your buck. Even if you do strength training, yes, you'll get like the stimulus for post two to three, maybe even four hours, but doing a HIIT training, I wouldn't suggest it. If you do want to do a HIIT training, the only time I would say to do a HIIT training is after you break your fast. So you're looking right now in Montreal roughly at like nine o'clock even sometimes, and then you want to wait about 30 to 60 to 90 minutes after a meal. So you're looking at like 10, 30, 11 o'clock just to do a HIIT workout. No. Don't do it. Now, when it comes to breaking your fast at the end of the day, pretty much you're gonna wanna keep it a higher protein and you guys can either mix the fats or carbs. So don't try to mix both together. This is gonna cause a huge influx of nutrients, especially if you're mixing fat and carbs and protein all in one. The fat and carbs, when you open up and the insulin goes driving in because you're insulin sensitive at this point, you're gonna open up the floodgates and then just cause a whole bunch of fat to be stored as body fat and that's not what we want. So keeping it either high protein and fat or high protein and carbs for the first meal is gonna be the most ideal scenario for you guys to break that fast. As well, I would highly suggest getting in a little bit of salt so with that meal, put a little bit of salt in your meal. I even suggest this before you guys finish your fast. So, you know, at 3 a.m., 4 a.m., have a drink with some water uh, and some salt inside or a meal with some salt inside. Again, because for the whole day, you're gonna have no electrolytes coming in. You're not gonna be able to drink any water. So getting those salts a little bit higher is gonna be the best bang for your buck to really get rid of those headaches that a lot of people get when they're fasting, especially during Ramadan. I know I used to get it a lot. Adding a little bit of salt really just fixed that completely. When it comes to protein for the fast, um, I suggest that spreading out your meals between, it's really hard, especially in Montreal, because we're eating at like nine something and then we'll have to stop at around three. So you're gonna have to interrupt your sleeping pattern to get that done. So what I've been doing is that I break my fast with a little meal. It really depends. Sometimes I do protein fat, sometimes I do protein carbs. So that's not really specific. The calories are low there. They're not super high, looking at just under 500 calories, 300 something, even 500 sometimes. I'm having that, I wait about an hour, and then I work out. I go for my resistance training, I go for um, pads with my dad, I go for any type of workout like that, and then I have another meal, which ends up being roughly at like 
and that one's the higher calorie meal. So looking at like a thousand something calories. And then right after that, I go to sleep, but then I wake up at around three o'clock and I have another meal. So I usually do three meals. And if I can, and I wake up after that huge meal, I'll have a snack before, but that tends to never happen because I'm pretty exhausted. So break the fast with a little meal, looking at like 500 calories. I have a huge meal of roughly 1500 calories or maybe 1200 calories, roughly something around there. And then my last meal again is roughly at 500 to 600 something calories there. So caloric intake wise is like 2500. It's usually the fast break meal that's the smallest, then I go for the bigger meal, and then I go for a little bit smaller of a meal later. But usually since I'm adding in that workout in between my sessions of breaking my fast, I do have a shake, and that shake gives me another roughly three to 400 calories. So we're looking at meal one, workout, protein shake for meal two, meal three, huge caloric intake meal, and then before fast starts, another meal, four meals, all roughly at around 40 to 50 grams of protein each. So, which begs to differ of the question, how much protein should you guys should be having? You guys should be hitting anywhere between 1.7 grams of kilograms of body weight or up to two grams. That's how much I suggest you have. To give perspective on the idea, I'm 212 pounds. I'm consuming roughly 170 grams, 180 grams, all the way up to 200 grams of protein every single day. Uh, the two shakes give me roughly, I think, 80 total because I put uh, protein and I put like hemp seeds, flax seeds, and everything like that. And the other meal is roughly the same thing. And then the rest of the protein is coming from the food specific. So two meals, and this is just for Ramadan. This is usually not what I do. So that's how to break your fast, how much protein should you have, should you do hit or list, when to train, how to plan your day. And the last topic that I find a lot of people skip out is water. Now you didn't see me mention it here and it's the reason why because I want to show you guys how to have it when you spread out throughout your day. So when you break your fast, usually this is how I like to plan my water intake and I usually go for anywhere between two to three liters of water for the whole day. Sometimes I can go as little as 2.5 and feel good for the next day but usually you'll notice if you have a little bit more water you'll be able to do the fast a lot more easier. So. Break your fast, 500 mLs to 750 mLs of water, right? That's two glasses, not that hard, okay? You can even have three glasses. Now, that'll take you about 20 to 30 minutes to drink, right? You're not chugging them down, It'll take you about 20, 30 minutes to drink. After that, you're gonna have your shake. Now, the shake that you're having has a liquid inside of at least another 250 mLs. So right there, in between 750 to one liter of water. Done, easy. When you're working out, you're drinking water, you're having at least 250 to 500 mLs of water. That's another serving that you're getting. You finish your workout, you have another shake, another 250 to 500 mLs of water. Boom, right there, we're anywhere between 1.5 to two liters. Super, super simple. With the big meal, I'll have one glass before the meal, I'll have one glass after that meal. That puts me roughly at two to 2.5 liters of water. And then when I have my last meal, again, I do the same thing. I have one glass before, one glass other, one glass after. And that puts me at my max total of either 2.5 to 3 liters to 3.5 liters of water. Super simple, super easy way to take water and there's implemented within that fasting or eating window that you have that's very tiny. But that's the easiest way that I've been able to manage it. Um, if you guys want, please comment down below if you guys want me to bring you through a day of it and how it is. Pretty much it's gonna be the night time, so you won't really see the whole day. But that's how I like to structure everything. Super easy plan when it comes to the workouts. Like I said, right after that first little fast break meal, go for it. You have the best date, you have influx amino acids, you have a replenishing of glycogen from the food you just had. That's why I said it depends. If you're gonna work out, have the protein and carbs. If you're not gonna work out, have the protein and fats. And maybe go do like a cardio session after, right? Play with it like that. That's it guys for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was a little insightful when it comes to Ramadan and everyone that's doing it out there. Let me know whatever you want in the comments below. Gladly to help. It's your boy. That's Zach. Punch, headbutt, elbow, knee. Peace.